concluding our Thanksgiving series entitled Thankfulness. And today we're going to be looking at Psalm 100. I kind of beat up on you the past few weeks about how you need to be thankful and being thankful for what you have and always showing your thankfulness. And that's what I want to talk about today uh, is living a life of thankfulness, always being thankful for what God has done for you. Amen. If you found your place, amen. amen. And I ask that you stand if you're able as we honor the reading of God's holy word. Psalm 100. Not a very long psalm, so I'm going to read it all. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to God and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray. Father in heaven, it is indeed a joy and privilege that we come before you with the spirit of humility. Father, with humbleness, that we can be considered your children. And Father, we thank you for the reading of your holy word. Your word that is inerrant, infallible, sharper than a double-edged sword. And Father, we pray that that word would convict us this morning. And that we would leave here a little bit better than we were than when we came. And Father, I just pray that uh, each and every one just understands the concept of being thankful, not just one day a year, but every day. And Lord, I would just ask that as we uh, sit under your word this morning, that you would open our minds and our hearts. Father, as my prayer is each and every week, as I stand behind this pulpit and preach your message to your people, it's not my will, but thy will be done. And if there be any within the sound of my voice who's never accepted Jesus as their Savior, that today could be their day of salvation, giving their life, their all to you, carrying the burdens no more, but surrendering to you. Father, that would be a great thankfulness gift. Lord, we pray that you would have your will and your way throughout this message, and we'll give you the praise. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. I, I want to preach a message that I've entitled, Living a Thankful <coughs> Life. You know, I, I'm a sort of a history buff. I, I, I love to uh, read about uh, the old days. I, I love um, watching documentaries. As a matter of fact, I was putting on a documentary last night on the American Revolution. Um, but it was kind of late. I thought I might end up falling asleep. So I was like, well, I'm going to save this one for later. And sure enough, we put in something, American Sniper or something, and probably uh, just like that, I was, I was out. I was out. I, I couldn't take it. But my, my favorite president of all time is probably Abraham Lincoln. What he endured during his presidency is just incomprehensible. A, a, a national war, uh, you know, the, um, the, the slavery issue. And uh, back then, he didn't have any secret service. He, he basically didn't have a lot of bodyguards. He, he, he had little to no security whatsoever. And the White House was almost like a revolving door. Anybody could come and could go. Try that now. <laughs> I don't think you'd get very far if you tried to come in and see the president. But during this period, there was an elderly lady who asked for an audience with uh, President Lincoln. And she was ushered into his private office. And he noticed that she carried a basket. And he looked at her and he said, uh, Madam, what is it that I can do for you? And she said, Mr. President, I have come here today to ask no favor from you. She said, I simply heard that you had a sweet tooth and that you like cookies. And she placed the basket onto the uh, table and she said, I have come bringing you a basket of cookies that I made. President Lincoln stood there as she spoke, and tears began to well up in his eyes, and they began to stream down his cheeks. And he took a moment and uh, collected himself. Uh, he was kind of speechless, and he said, My dear woman, he said, Your thoughtful and unselfish deed moves me. 
She said that he said thousands of people have entered this office since I became president, but you alone are the first to come asking for no favor for yourself or someone else. You know, I read that story and I began to wonder, do you think sometimes that God feels the same way as Abraham Lincoln did that day? Think about it. How often do we bombard heaven's gates with our prayers, our petitions, our needs, without stopping to even give a simple thanks for all that he has done for us in our lives? How often do we seek his divine intervention, yet when even good things are happening, we fail to give him the proper praise in which he is due? We don't give him a few simple words of thanksgiving. We, we don't give him a few simple words of praise. We, we sort of expect it, right? So many people have the understanding that God is there to grant our every wish as if he were some sort of genie in a bottle. We rub him, we, we ask him for something, and we get it. Or we barter and, and bargain with him and say, Lord, I'll go to church if you do this for me. I, I'll read your word if you do this for me. I'll pray from time to time and communicate with you if you do this for me. But we fail to give our thanks. When I was a kid, about seven or eight years old, maybe nine or ten, I'm getting older now, I forget all the years, I had a friend. And my friend was what I thought was the luckiest kid in the world. He had every toy imaginable, it seemed to me, under the sun. He, he was the only child of his grandmother's only child, and she lavished him with almost anything that he wanted. He had spending money. Any toy that he asked for or demanded, it would magically appear. And I admit, I was a little jealous. Because he would have all the latest games and latest gadgets, sporting equipment, electric tra uh, trains. He, he had uh, toy soldiers, baseball cards, anything that he wanted. He had. It, was, it didn't have to matter how, much, how expensive it was. It, it, it didn't matter what it was. If he asked his grandmother for it, he had it. But do you know something about this young man? that was, There was a drawback in his character. That it, it seemed to me to cancel out all the stuff that, that he had. You know what it was? He was a spoiled, rotten, uh, let, let, let me see if I can put it up. <laughs> he, he was uh, not very thankful. He was disrespectful. He was unappreciative. And he was a smart mouth brat. That's what he was. And I remember thinking how he argued with his grandmother, how he debated with his grandmother, how he was unappreciative to all the things that she wanted to do for him. And I think back and, and I, I think about and remember that story some 35 years later. And I think to myself, how often are we like my friend when it comes to the gifts that God has given us? <coughs> Ungrateful. Unappreciative. How often? How often do we take for granted the many blessings that God has? has given us. Folks, you know, we live in the greatest country on earth. We are a blessed people. This country, even with all its faults, has given us opportunities in order to better ourselves. And we have that ability because God has given us that ability. Well, I read a, an interesting article recently, and I want us to put it into... Uh, contrast with, with how God has blessed us in this great country. Because if you think times are tough, or if you think you have complaints in your life, consider this. Our forefathers went without sugar until the 13th century. Without coal for fire until the 14th century. until ba Without battered bread until the 15th century. Without potatoes until the 16th century. Without coffee or tea until the 17th century. Without pudding until the 18th century. Without matches and electricity until the 19th century. Without canned goods until the 20th century. Now what is it that you were complaining about? You know, I woke up this morning and I was rather warm. Because my heater had been running most of the night. I, I, I woke up and flipped the switch. 
And I had a light that came on without having to light a match. You know, I wouldn't mind doing that. I sometimes live like it's 1819 instead of 2019. Uh, but, but that's just because I, I love history and I love that era. But we have got to be thankful on this eve of Thanksgiving for what God has done for us. And as we wrap up our, our final Thanksgiving message this morning, take time to remember all the blessings that we have in spite of the fact that, that we are completely unworthy of any single one of them. In spite of the fact that, that we, we sometimes take them for granted, God still loves us and wants to bless us. So if we are truly a thankful people, if you have your notes, I want to give you two things this morning. Two things, that's it. I don't smell the food that much, so we should be good for the next 15 minutes, 20 minutes. But the first thing I want us to see, if we are a thankful people, we will make a joyful noise to the Lord. Look with me at Psalm 100, verse 1. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. When was the last time that you shouted for joy to the Lord for anything? When was the last time you shouted to joy to the Lord? I'd venture to say you may not remember, or at least none of us have ever really shouted for joy. We, we went through the book of Jonah, we, we, we probably shouted to, uh, to God like Jonah did in anger and frustration because he did not give us something that we wanted in the time and frame uh, that, that we wanted it. Right? We, 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 we shout in anger and frustration when he doesn't bless us and fix things to suit us or meet some need in our lives. Maybe we think about shouting for joy and it sounds like something they do in one of those charismatic churches down the street. You know, I grew up Pentecostal and I can remember in, in, in Pentecostal church how they would encourage everyone when it was time to pray to pray out loud audibly, all at the same time. Now, I remember that sometimes that was a little bit confusing, and to, to me it just sounded like noise. And I thought, how is God ever going to hear something like that when they're all talking at the same time? But you know what? He's God, and we are not. And although I prefer the style of our uh, worship and our order of worship that we have in the Baptist church, I, I can't help but think that uh, God is capable of hearing our prayers, whether it was from our heart or whether it was audible. Matter of fact, I, I don't think that this psalm is for one minute a suggestion that we stand on the street corner and shout. I, I don't think that he's suggesting that we even stand at the altar and shout our praises to God. But I think he explains it in the second verse when he instructs us to worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. That's what worship is. Coming before him with an attitude that says we are thankful to God for his goodness. You know, I heard about this lady in church who didn't sing at all. She would literally just sit there with her hymnal open and her mouth would be closed. And the pastor eventually kind of got curious and he went to her and he just was just inquiring about why that she chose to um, not sing anything. She would just uh, sit there with her, uh, her hymn to open and she said, well, Pastor, I, I don't sing very well. And so I just sing from my heart. Now, maybe she's on to something because the Bible does say that we need to um, uh, sing with our heart. Gladness. But the Bible also says that we need to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, nobody can define what is and what is not joyful when it comes to what the Lord hears from our sanctuaries. We might think that we not, might not have a great voice, but God doesn't think that. He wants us to sing with a glad heart and thanksgiving in our heart for all that he has done for us. We need to use the gifts that God has given us to give him glory, to give him honor, and to give him praise. Not caring about what the person beside us thinks, not, not caring about what the person behind us may think. We need to sing, not only with our heart, but with our mouth, and say, Lord, thank you. Because I can guarantee, and I've used this illustration before, but if we were with those other 100,000 people at Bryant-Denny Stadium or War Eagle Stadium or whatever they call that stadium there, uh, we would be shouting for joy when our team scores a touchdown. 
I figure we get an amen from that. I think all of our teams won pretty uh, convincingly yesterday. But we would do that. We would shout because that would be exciting. Why don't we shout for being excited about what God has done for us? Amen. Always be joyful and make a joyful noise to the Lord. The second only thing we need to do is we need to serve the Lord with gladness. And that's just what the verse says in verse number 2. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. This should be our attitude when we come to church. We, we, we shouldn't have the attitude that serving or service is something that we do under obligation uh, in an already overfilled schedule that we have in our lives. What we need to do is, and I, I, I truly believe this, is we need to have an attitude of gratitude. Listen, our attitude is contagious. Whatever it is that we are experiencing in our lives, if it's positive, other people will feed off of that. If it's negative and we're mean and we're mean-spirited, then other people are going to feed off of that as well. But if we are truly convinced that we are to serve the Lord with gladness, then that is what would permeate from our heart and from our lives. We need to make sure that we are serving the Lord with gladness. Look, the psalmist instructs us, give thanks to him, praise his name, and he concludes the psalm by stating, the Lord is good and his love endures forever. You know what? Some, one thing I've come across in my ministry is that many people, even Christians, often have the mistaken belief that God is up in heaven somewhere, floating around, chilling on a cloud, and uh, looking down on us with sadness and disappointment and just waiting to zap us with a lightning bolt whenever we mess up. Right? That's not how it works. The Bible tells us that His love endures forever. And if you are a child of God, the Bible says that nothing can take you from the palm of His hand. If you're a child of God, then the Bible says that nothing can destroy the love that God has for us. In spite of the fact that we've all taken His goodness and greatness for granted. In spite of the fact that, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. In spite of the fact that His love continues through all generations, we sometimes don't serve the Lord with gladness. You know, when I read the Scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, you, you read genealogies and, and you see um, so-and-so lived for 985 years and they were faithful to God. So-and-so lived 875 years and they died, but they were faithful to God. I want my obituary and my tombstone to say that I lived 70, 80, 90 years and I was faithful to God. Because if I can't be faithful in 70, 80, 90 years, how, how was it that they were faithful for 875? I'm preparing a place. My, my treasures are being prepared for me in heaven. Not what we have on earth. This earth is going to pass away. Me, my body is going to pass away like a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. We need to be thankful for all we have for God right now. Sometimes I think that uh, thankfulness is a matter of perspective. I heard a story about a young college woman, and I'll close with this. She wrote a letter to her mother. And the mother and the letter said, Dear Mom, sorry I haven't written sooner. I broke my arm and my left leg. You see, I jumped from the second floor of my dorm. There was a fire that broke out, but we were lucky. A young gas station attendant saw the blaze, called the fire department, and they were there within minutes. But I was in the hospital for a few days. Paul, the gas station attendant, he came to see me every day. And because it took so long for our dorm to be livable again, I moved in with him. He has been so nice, and I must admit that I've fallen in love with him. She said, I'm dropping out of college, and we're getting married. We plan to get married. I hope things are fine at home. Uh, I'm, I'm doing better now. I will write more when I get the chance. Love, your daughter, Susan. P.S. None of the above is true, but I did get a D in math, and I flunked chemistry. <laughs> I just wanted you to receive this news in its proper perspective. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I received a letter like that, I'd probably had a heart attack before I got to the P.S. 
<laughs> and, and then I never would have known the true outcome of what happened. Oh, God, we, we need to be thankful for the very breath in our life, for the fact that we woke up this morning, for the fact that we put two feet on the floor, for, for the fact that, for, if nothing else, and you say, well, woe is me, uh, I've got all these problems, I, I hurt from head to toe, nobody loves me. You know who does? God loves you. In spite of all the other things that are going on in your life, God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross. Jesus, who we're about to celebrate the birth of our Savior. You know, I'm like um, Will Ferrell on Elf, man. I'm, I'm like, Christmas, I get all excited. I can't wait. I've been working on my Christmas messages. And matter of fact, I've been working on my New Year's messages. And I'm just, I'm ready to roll. But I love, love, love Christmas. We need to be thankful, not just today, not just Thursday. But every day. We need to celebrate the birth of Jesus, not just on December 25th, but every day. We need to celebrate the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not just in April or into March when it may fall, but every day. Be thankful to God. What, what, what does this often say? And praise His name. For the Lord is good, His love endures forever, His faithfulness continues through all generations. We need to be thankful. It is my prayer that the Lord instills within us that thankfulness and that attitude of gratitude for all his blessings, both now and in the days to come. And if you can't think of anything that you have to be thankful for, be thankful that Jesus came to this earth, died on the cross, rose again, and he loves you enough that he died for your sins and mine. And during this time of invitation, I would just encourage you, if you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus as Savior, then don't leave here without knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt where it is that you will spend all of eternity. The psalmist was right. Shout for joy to the Lord all ye earth. If we are living a thankful life, we will definitely worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs and thanksgiving. Take this time now to contemplate not only how blessed you are, but contemplate where it is that you will spend eternity and how you use your thankfulness and your blessings to give that back to God. Would you pray with me?